Do you think that during parts of the game against AC Milan and in the early stages of the season that we're seeing the Liverpool of old pressing high, looking dangerous every time they go forward? How encouraging has the start of the season been for Liverpool, do you think? Yes, of course. That's the, that's the way we want it. But when, when this is the season, it's not easy to keep it for 90 minutes. So there are some of the boys a certain points of the, of the game that the, the player needs to rest because there's no way that you keep the high pressure during 90 minutes. There is no, no team in the world who can manage that. So, of course, uh, they are the first 30 minutes, I think they were brilliant. Uh, very high pressure, recovering the other half, uh, creating chances. Uh, you could see the, the players from the wide areas arriving, making crosses, sh- uh, shot from outside of the box until that goal arrived. And we had also a penalty. Uh, but in the moment that you, you relax a little bit, you try to control if uh, you can make mistakes. And that's what I think what, what, what happened. A couple of mistakes at the back. Uh, playing against team, a uh, team like AC Milan, that you know that they got a lot of quality. Uh, it can happen that you, that you suffer uh, a chance or that you concede. Uh, the most important for me was the reaction, uh, how the, the team uh, reacted and started approaching the, the second game, the second half, sorry. And those first minutes of intensity, and the players who were involved in the second half getting the, the same level of the first half. And I, I, that's going to be key, Sam, uh, to, to see that they, they, all the players involved, committed to give 100%. It's going to be key on a, on a, on a year where there's going to be a lot of games, there's going to be injuries, and everybody has to be ready to, to perform. Do you think Liverpool are being overlooked a bit in the title race this season? It feels like a lot of people are talking about City, Chelsea, even Manchester United. Do you think Liverpool are... I could go under the radar a little bit. Is that fair? Even better. Even better. We can continue our way. No one uh, bothering us. No spotlights on the players. That's pressure that you put away. And uh, it could be even better to be like that. And I'm, I'm going to compare it with Atletico Madrid, who last year was under the radar because it was Barcelona, Real Madrid. Everybody talking about who's going to win La Liga. And at the end, it was Atletico Madrid that it was quiet, getting points, getting the, the big of the gap. So sometimes it's even better that they talk about Man United, City, Chelsea. They are good teams. They are going to be uh, fighting for, to get the, the trophy. But at the end, it is about trying to be consistent. I think Liverpool knows how to do that. They did it last year on probably one of the toughest uh, seasons of uh, the last five, six. So I'm sure that this year we got the same players. We have the same quality, the same talent. So I'm not bothered about uh, what the people think around it. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy and really positive about how the players are performing. You played with some brilliant players during your time at Liverpool. How good is Mo Salah? Does he go down now as a Liverpool Premier League legend? 100 Premier League goals already. Is he in some way potentially still underrated a little bit? Yeah, sometimes. I, I, I understand that he's a, he's a guy who doesn't like to talk much. He's a guy who doesn't express his feeling or the way that he's feeling every day. But definitely you can see the, uh, by his performances that he's a, an amazing, amazing player. And he's even getting better and better because now he doesn't wait in some runs, long runs, get, get, uh, dribbling the ball, trying to beat players one by one He's getting... Uh, he learned that... Um, to be more effective around the, the box is when you combine, you get the ball and with the talent is going on left foot, it can be uh, vital and key for Liverpool. So I expect even more goals this season because it is becoming more clinical when he's uh, inside the box. Um, Lewis, I still go to Anfield quite regularly, obviously haven't been because of the pandemic. What I love the most is even though you haven't been at Liverpool for many years, your name is still sung regularly on the cop. Um, can I get you to sing? Your song? No, for I'm not going to sing. I can tell you that is probably my favorite song. Of course, it's my song, but <laughs> there are a few good ones that I like it a lot. But it definitely is a, a very special song. I'm not going to sing. Don't make me sing because I'm so bad at it. Why not? But, Come on, you must sing it all the time in your head in the shower yeah, that's, when you're making. No, I haven't. Give, if I if I start it, will you finish it off? Yeah. Come on. But you okay. have to go all the way. Okay, I'll do the first bit. I'll sing the first four lines. You finish it off. Luis Garcia, he drinks sangria. He came from Barca to Liverpool. He's five foot seven. He's football heaven, so please don't take a Luis away. <laughs> well done. Thank you. How, how, I don't how, have my guitar here. I don't have my guitar here. You should have put, I thought you were going to put a bit more effort into it, if I'm being honest. But anyway, it doesn't matter. No, but see, how special is that? You know, again, it's been a long time since you were a Liverpool player. 
but I imagine every time you, whether it's on TV or in the ground and you hear that song sung, it must be a special feeling. Very special. I mean, probably it's one of the, the, the best things that you take from, uh, from my, or I take from my career. Uh, you can win trophies, you can play uh, good games. Of course, you're going to remember the derbies, the finals. But at the end, when, when your career ends, uh, you look back and, and, and try to find um, things that, um, that you know that you've done something well. For example, I know that if I go to Atletico de Madrid, the supporters will take, uh, will take me with, uh, with a warm welcome because I did everything I could to, to, to make them proud. Knowing that at Anfield, uh, they continue singing uh, a song that they made only for me is just something um, special. And um, when I try to uh, give back all that love, uh, is uh, uh, go every single time that I'm here in Liverpool uh, and that I can I have the chance of meeting some supporters. When I travel as ambassador all around the world, I try to um, to bring exactly to give that uh, to to them because uh, it's been amazing and. I can tell you that song has been sung in, in Australia, in Singapore, in China, everywhere that I've been. And it's, it's even bigger because if you hear it here uh, on the cop or at Danfield, uh, yes, of course. But when you travel yeah. thousands and thousands of miles and you know that the song is still sing, uh, sing there, it's just amazing. Ah, lovely stuff, Lewis. Lovely stuff. Um, last week, Cristiano Ronaldo made his second Manchester United debut um, against Newcastle. The following day, we had on Talk Sport Lee Grant, who is the, uh, one of the Manchester United goalkeepers, and he told us about the Friday night before the game and how normally they would always have a dessert after their dinner, maybe a brownie, a, an apple pie. But he told us that um, all the players were having a look at Cristiano Ronaldo and seeing what he was doing, and he didn't touch any desserts whatsoever on that Friday night. <laughs> So Lee Grant told us that not one Man United player had any dessert on that Friday night because of Cristiano Ronaldo. There was no brownies, no apple pie, no nothing. I'm looking for a Luis Garcia Liverpool canteen story here. Do you remember anything in your time at Liverpool where Gerard or Carragher said you can't be eating that and you can't be doing that or someone has something they shouldn't be eating? No, Carragher Car can't say anything like that because I remember him getting uh, some uh, scoops of uh, ice cream some days before, uh, some nights before the game. So he can't tell you anything about that and he will be alive. But I remember that when, when we arrived um, uh, at the canteen, we had so many different snacks chocolate bars, snacks, even chips at some points. And uh, when Paco Yesteran arrived the day after, it was all gone. We didn't have anything at all. Uh, only those uh, uh, kind of uh, cereals that, that taste like anything. It's like you put grass on your mouth. And uh, there was no chocolate bars. It was all healthy stuff, uh, vitamins and proteins all around the place. So there was not much. Uh, but if I have to tell you one thing about the, our canteen, uh, Pepe Rain and myself used to go and cook for some of the other lads because you, we know in Spain we, we had um, this um, steak, we had it red, you know, quite red. And here normally it's very well cooked, so it's, it's, it's different. For us, it's, it's not nice. And the meat, the pieces of meat that we had, they were fantastic, lovely. So we used to get inside the canteen and we'd make our own steaks. And uh, thanks God. Uh, uh, the, the girls allowed us because uh, it wasn't not, not even allowed to get into the kitchen. But we sneak in and we used to make our own steaks, yeah, yeah. to and, have a little bit of Spain here in, in Liverpool. And did you make for the whole team as well? Did, did, did the players uh, like, not, like your not, steaks? Not, not everybody likes uh, the, the, the meal like that. A piece of Ceylon uh, steak, something like that, that when you cut it, you see a little bit bloody. In, uh, not everybody likes it, and, uh, but it's the way that we, we like it in Spain and we used to do it just... Yes. Side to side, and that's it. Yeah. And Jamie Carragher, was he the biggest snacker in the Liverpool team? Was he the one that always went a little bit too far in the canteen? Yeah, well, actually, uh, Jamie's not one of those um, fanatics about food. You can give him, a, I don't know, a rock and he will eat it. So he's, he's not a, a, fancy, a fancy eater at all. <laughs> Luis, Rafa Benitez brought you to the Premier League. He's now managing Everton. Do you think in your career post-Liverpool you could ever have played for Everton? Me? You? No, I can, uh, now it's easy to say no, no, never. <laughs> but when you were playing though, if Everton came in, no, you are no, for no. Liverpool? No, for, at, that, at that moment, no, but much more with the, with the lads, the, the, the way that the, when I arrived, I knew straight away that the games against Everton and against Man United, they were, they were like massive, massive. So you kind of, I'm not going to use the, the, the word hate, but you kind of start getting that 
Uh, I don't want to be closer to any of them or the, 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 the players or, or near the stadium. So even though they are very close. So, yeah, it's easy now to say, no, I, I, I wouldn't play uh, for Everton when I was a player. But, yeah, you can see that at the end, we are all professionals. And if I want, at some point uh, that happened, uh, you might have taken. But no, the straight away, I would say no. Um, also, this is quite incredible. An interview with Luis Garcia. And I still haven't asked you about the ghost goal, the goal against <laughs> Chelsea. Back in, have you ever gone through an interview where no one's asked you about the ghost goal? Actually, today we had a couple, but uh, I, sure. I brought it up. I brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to ask you about the ghost goal, but I'm going to ask you: Do you believe in ghosts? Uh, no, not at all. Don't just not not having it. No, not having it. Okay, cool. don't tell me that you've seen one because then, yeah, we are. There's one that comes at home uh, for Halloween, but that's the only one. For what? For Halloween? Yeah. A real ghost. A real ghost going for Halloween, yeah. So you, do believe, so, you, so you do believe in ghosts then? Yeah, we call it that way. Okay, I'll right. send it with you next Halloween. Okay, yeah, take a picture and you can send it to me, yeah? Okay. And last one for me, Lewis. Uh, the game this weekend, Liverpool Crystal Palace is live on TalkSport 2. Bit of a bogey team, Palace have been at times for Liverpool. Are you expecting another tough test? Definitely. I mean, uh, but, but what I mentioned before, there is... All the, all the games uh, from now on, they're going to be tough. But not only Premier League, every single cup, but you can see all around uh, Europe, uh, the, the games are getting more, uh, more, more difficult because all the teams are getting ready. They are physically well, well, well drilled, uh, tactically very well organized. So at the end, when you play 11 against 11, it's very, very difficult to, to win a game easily. Of course, you can win it. Of course, uh, you can have moments of uh, dominance. But at the end, you're playing against professional footballers that they are ready for it. And it's not going to be an easy game in the, in the whole competition. So I'm not expecting an easy game. Hopefully we can win 3 0 and that's it. But uh, definitely uh, it's not going to be easy. You are a brilliant man, Lewis. Thank you very, very, very much for your time uh, this afternoon. You're a great man.